All right, yesterday, hopefully this is working well. Yesterday, we, that was yesterday, or earlier today, if you haven't slept yet, we, were, we finished talking about where electricity comes from, and it comes from electrons moving. We talked about and the makeup of the atom and all that stuff, and the valence ring, and, and uh, so we're moving on from there. So hopefully you, you got that one. And now we're going to talk about units of electricity. Item number three, units of electricity. Units of electricity. Well, let's start off with current. Now, in an attempt not to Take one thing you don't know and say, well, it's just like that. Just like I think I shared with some of you guys. When I wanted to learn to play golf, I went to the driving range and they had an instructor there. And I'm like, yeah, I'd like to learn to play golf. He says, fantastic. Let me see your swing. I show my swing. Well, that's terrible. You need to do this. Like, you know, like in baseball. I'm like, dude, I don't play baseball. And everything he kept doing, you just got to choke up on it. Like baseball. I'm like, okay, I don't play baseball. What do I got to go? So if I say it's like water, they'd be like, well, I'm not a hydrologist. I'm not a plumber. So why are you can, but, but anyway, you do seawater and, and seawater and uh <laughs> you do have water in your house most of you so current so current is the flow of electrons okay so just like if we were trying to measure flow of water or something if we wanted to measure the flow of water um we would have to get like what a little water wheel or something it would go and um, and actually that's how it is done in aircraft if you want to measure the exact flow of fuel going into the engine, you have a fuel hose, and they'll actually put a little wheel in there that, that has little paddles on it. Paddles, paddles. And little paddles can, can move around as it, it goes through there. What, do you, you have a JPI that the fuel transducer, don't you? Mm -hmm. Do you have something different than that in yours? Is it? Uh, I think it's the same thing. Yeah, it's just, I don't know of any other type. Um, so a little little wheel that just measures the fuel that goes through it. Well, it would be the same thing with current. You actually have to measure it as it goes through there. Now, I want you to think about this for just a second, if I can kind of make up something. If I do have a fuel hose here, and we're just looking at this fuel hose right here, and I said, well, I want to measure how much fuel is going through there. Could I take off and just make a little bypass right here and just make, a, make another little wheel right here and then say, well, we'll just go like that. We'll just sample some of the fuel and we'll just sort of see what happens right there. That way, you know, I don't have to break this apart. And then could I do that? No. no. So don't try doing that with electricity. Don't try and have a, I'll show you, have a circuit and just say, well, I'm just going to sample it. All right. You'll see what I'm saying in a second. So hopefully. So current. Current is the symbol. The symbol is Y. M B O L symbol is I, I, which stands for W, which stands, S T A N stands for intensity. Intensity. All right. I'm not going to write this. The conventional symbol for current is I, which may seem puzzling. It originates from the French phrase intensity, uh, some French phrase, but anyway, which stands for intensity. I could leave that off. Um, so we'll do measured in amps. Measured in amps. Named after Andre Marie Ampere. It is the flow, flow of electrons through a conductor. What is a conductor? It's the guy that. Uh, that's why I was looking for a train thing. I say drives the train, but <laughs> no, it's the it's 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 the wire. It's, I know that's why I didn't say it. All right, so flow of electrons through a conductor, and this is kind of said like, like water flowing across a water wheel, across a water wheel. 
And we could throw in something right here that is almost trivial. Of course, Phil likes to say, gee whiz stuff. Um, one amp, one amp, actually it should be big A because it's named after the guy. Or if I'm actually writing the word out, let me do that. A-M-P-E-R-E, -E, that's the proper ampere, is the rate of flow, rate of flow, let me move this up. of one rate of flow of one coulomb, C-O-U-L-O-M-B per second. And one coulomb, one coulomb, I'll put this over here, I, one coulomb is 6.28 I always remember that because it's 2 pi, times 10 to the 12, 18, 18th power of electrons flowing. Is that 6.28? Yep, 6.28 times 10 to the 18. And the formula is amps equals coulombs divided by seconds. But all that's not very important, as Hannah would say, is this on the test? No. What is important here? Number one, the symbol is I. It stands for? Intensity. All right, but the symbol is I. It is measured in amps, and it is the flow of electricity. All right? The next one we have is B, voltage. Voltage, the symbol is E. Um, it could be called electromotive, electromotive force. If you see that, you can be abbreviated E, oops, e M, F, electromotive force, um, or it's not called this, but you could think this, electron moving force. It stands for electromotive force, but like I said. So voltage, symbol is E. Well, it's measured in volts. Why is it called volts? Because of Alessandro Volta. So he gets his name there. It could be described as electrical pressure. Or, as I say all the time, it is a difference, difference in potential. And one volt, one volt will drive one amp, one amp through Roll up a little bit, oops, not that much, through one ohm. Now when we talk about this difference of potential, this pressure, you, it might be helpful to think about like air pressure or something like that. And I was trying to figure out a way to really describe this to you guys and I, I haven't we'll, we'll try this one out so if you have let's just say some sort of ball a basketball if you will and you inflate this basketball but this basketball happens to have a pressure gauge on it anybody know what a basketball pressure happens to be 40 Jeez. 40 let's just go with it even if he's not right 
<laughs> huh? Well, it's, it works for me. So we got this basketball, and scroll up a little bit. We'll even get kind of a reddish color. That's all I got here. So we have a basketball, all right? And we say it's got 40 psi. What does psi mean? Pounds per square inch. Pounds per square psi. We have pounds per square inch. There's also something called psi. I G. What is that? Pounds per square inch. Gauge, right? So that's a reference to a gauge. Um, there's uh, P E P S I. What is that? Pepsi. That's Pepsi. That's just a soda right there. So we don't worry about that. <laughs> so, okay. So we have 40 psi in this basketball. Well, if we think about this 40 psi, it's 40 pounds of air pressure for every square inch pressing out on this basketball, okay? And so we have that going. But it's a relative term. If you never really stop to think about it, but it's relative to what is outside. Now, if I took this basketball and I put it in an air chamber, and I had in here just happened to have 14.7 uh, PSI, what would the ball read now? Well, it actually read the same thing because guess what we're sitting in right now? Air. Air. What's okay? So our pressure around us right now is about fourteen point seven, but we'll we'll just round it up to uh, we'll say fifteen. So fifteen. Okay. So we actually have a little bit of a difference there. But what if I bumped this pressure chamber up and I pumped air into it and I pumped it up until this air pressure there was forty psi? Well, just uh, let me see. I don't want to do this. I want to make it easy math. Let me go back just a little bit. We'll make it just real simple. So forget the 14.7. We'll just say that um, we'll ignore that part and just make it real simple and just say the outside air pressure is, uh, the pressure in there is zero, okay? So zero. So at zero, we have 40 pounds per pressure sticking out, um, pushing out. Now, what if I made it 10 PSI inside this chamber? Then what would, what would the ball read now? What's that? It would read 30 because it's just a difference between the two. And so if I went all the way up to 40 PSI, what would the pressure inside the ball be? It would be zero. Okay, you guys follow along. So it, much the same way I like to think about electricity is sort of the same. When I say there's a volt, it's one volt of pressure based upon something else. So you're always referencing it to something. Okay, so if I take a battery, a battery... You know, with my plus and minus, I have a little, and I take and I put a voltmeter across there. That'd be the symbol for voltmeter. Well, right now, if I don't connect it, it's going to have how many volts? Zero. Okay, we'll say this is a six volt battery potential. So it, it would say zero because I'm referencing the positive end of the battery to the air, right? And so that's referencing I'm getting nothing. But if I connect it to here, I'm getting six volts now let's take that one step further so we have six volts so if i take a battery that has six volts six volts and we'll make a complete circuit and i'll put a resistor in there so i have one resistor okay and this is a six volt battery and so if i have a voltmeter that goes from here to here, just like I did before, how many volts would I show? Six. Six, okay. So how many volts are in this wire then? Well, what if I put it right here and right here? How many volts do I have? Zero. zero. Why zero? Because there's no difference. Because there's no difference. Because I'm measuring here to here. It's the same thing. So there's, there's no difference of potential. See, when I did the battery, I had one on the positive side and one lead on the negative side, and I measured that, and I'm like positive to negative, and now there's pressure, okay? Um, it would be kind of like if I had a big water tower. We could think, think of that big water tower. So way up there is a water tower. And uh, see if I can do that right. It says WB on it because that's what it's going to say. <laughs> and um, so I want to see the water pressure. Now, if this thing is, let's say it's 100 feet up in the air, and I take a hose and I run it all the way down to the bottom, 
and I put a gauge right there. Would, do you think it would read anything? Yes. Okay, and it would because it's all the way down here. But what if I just took the gauge and put it right here? How much pressure am I going to read? Really just whatever's, you know, here. Not much of anything because I'm measuring. I don't know if maybe that helped you, maybe it didn't. It's the same thing, you know, if I put a little hose there and a little hose there. What's the difference between the two? Well, almost nothing, you know, but down here it's a lot. So you just have to look at that and realize, is there a difference of something? No, there's no difference. Uh, what if I put the meter over here? Okay, now I'm going to start reading something because this is the positive side and this is the negative side and there's a difference across this resistor. So we're gonna get more into that, but it's why you really think about that. It's always the difference of two things. If there's no difference, you're gonna read zero. So it's like saying, what is the difference between this spot on the wire and this spot of the wire? Zero. What's the difference between this spot and this spot? Zero. How about this spot and this spot? Zero. Okay, so there's gotta be something that, that has causes the voltage to get used up, a load or something like that. <clears throat> So, okay. Yeah. So, could you say that um, from one point to the other point, you're just measuring, you're not really measuring the outside, you're measuring in from that point to that point, basically? Yeah. Right? I think so. Okay. <laughs> if I understood that correctly. Not the whole thing is what I'm trying to tell it, say. Um, well, right here, I'm measuring the whole thing. But it's also six right here. We're going to get into why that is. A little bit later just because there's one one thing so uh, we'll, we'll we'll go a little bit more on that but um, and hopefully it makes sense but I just want to bring up some some very interesting or interesting very important points go to black okay so now that we have a battery I want to put something here we have a load you always have to have a load all right that's just a resistor representing some sort of load so we talked about amps. Amps is what? Current. Current. It's measuring flow. Okay, so if I want to know how many amps are flowing through this circuit, can I take a meter and put it right here and right? Let's go. Give myself enough room. Like this to see how much is flowing. No, it's the same thing. Here's my fuel hose, and I just went off the fuel hose and see how much. Well, you know what you're going to get is, honestly, you're going to get some electrons. They're going to come this way, and they're going to go, you know what? We can also go this way if we like, and so they, they'll go that way and around and then through, and then some will go this way depending on your circuit. So what you're doing is you're taking a sampling, which means absolutely nothing. Uh, but the wonderful thing about this circuit that I just drew is there's only one load in it. And when I do this, ammeters have very, very low resistance. So what you do to the circuit basically is you make it look like this to electrons. That's what it looks like because they don't see this resistor anymore because that resistor is just not interesting to them. It's too far apart. It's like, what's this all this way? And so in this particular circuit, where's the load? The ammeter isn't much of a load. There's no resistance to it. So how, it will tell you that it is, has a lot of current flow. How much current flow? All of the current flow because you just shorted out the circuit. And now the wires will get a little hot and melty because it is the same thing as hooking it up direct like that. And uh, that's a bad thing to do. So we can't do that. So you cannot hook an ammeter up like that. So let's go back to where we were. Maybe I can do this. Yes. Would a six volt battery be enough to melt the wires if we were to just connect them? I don't know. Listen, Tobias, is a six volt battery enough to blow the meter fuse? Yeah. <laughs> Wendy, would you concur? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. If you don't believe me, you can take your little clip on wires. Maybe it's a good experiment. Go ahead and clip on your battery and just see what happens. Can you join the club? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> It's an exclusive club. Okay, if I want to measure the current flow, the current flow, this is a very important point. You must break the circuit. Did I break the circuit? Did I open the circuit up? Yes. Everybody say yes, he did, he took it apart. If I had an alligator clip, what would I do with my alligator clip? I would disconnect it. If you try to measure amperage without disconnecting something, you are 
wrong. I was going to say something. <laughs> you are messing up. Okay, so to do that, the ammeter must go in. This is called series in series. Series means only one path. So the ammeter would go there. Now, do all of the electrons have to flow through the ammeter? Yes. All of them do. And that is just fine. And so that is how you hook up an ammeter. If I want to measure voltage, well, could, I, could I do that with voltage? Break this apart and put a voltmeter here? No. No, you can't. Because a voltmeter has very, very high resistance, and you just change the whole circuit. So you can't do that. Now you're not measuring flow. You're measuring differences of potential. So to do that, I would put it across something. So voltage is easy. You just put the leads wherever you want. won't hurt it for the most part. Um, what happens if I do this with an ammeter? You will, it shorts out the battery and you will get all of the amperage. That's how much you will get. And the fuse will last a millisecond and then you're done. So, okay. I, I'll bring this up again and again, but I just think it's worth talking about now because we're having problems. So, uh, voltage. Voltage is a difference of potential. And so that's what that is. We have amperage, voltage. And next is resistance. Resistance, the symbol is R for, well, that'd be too easy, resistance. Resistance. It is measured in ohms, okay, measured in ohms, measured in ohms, named for George Simon Ohm. Ohms restrict. That restricts. Restricts the flow of electrons, flow of current or electrons. It causes it causes a voltage drop. It can be thought of as electrical friction. Uh, symbol is R also, it's measured in ohms, and the symbol for an ohm is the Lululemon symbol. There we go, it's ohms. Lululemon? It's very expensive yoga workout clothing. Huh? I know what it is. I know. I have several Lululemon Lulu pants. A pair of yoga pants, about 150 bucks. It's expensive to be cheap. Oh, okay. All right. That's all. okay. So a simple circuit. A simple circuit must contain four items. Source. Must contain four items. What are these four items? All right, so we got one, two, three, four. Okay, so I heard a load. So resistance, a resistor, Path. resistor, or a load of some sort. Otherwise, the circuit won't last very long. That is something to use electrons. Some sort of source of power. Something to use electrons. What was that, Zach? Uh, source of power. Power supply. Other Zach. That's what he was going to say. Power supply, resistor. What else we got? Tires. Path. Okay. Con or conductor. Conductor. Something to carry the electrons. We have a source of electrons. Doesn't really use up the electrons. They go back. 
A conductor, something to move electrons. And a path. You don't have a path, you don't have a circuit. So, yeah. Okay. So we've got a power supply, which we're going to always use a battery. By the way, that, that's a multi-cell battery. This would be a single-cell battery. When I went to school, the conventions changed, and that's why uh, when you guys did your project where you had to write symbols, and I'm like, oh, I don't like that symbol, or that's not that one. They're different throughout the years. Yeah. Isn't the path, isn't the conductor the path? Not really. Well, I'll show you. But yes, you're not totally wrong, but you see what I mean. So, but anyway, this is a single cell, multi cell. When I went to school, that was two uh, single cell. And if you wanted a six cell, you'd have to go one, two, four, six. That was six. God help you if you had to write a 24 volt battery because you had to write uh, 12 of those and you'd have the papers like that one, which is the battery symbol. It's stupid. So things change. Oops. Now it's just multi cell and single cell it works. Okay. So we have a power supply. We have a conductor. We have a resistor. And I have more conductor. Do I have a circuit? No, but I have a power supply and a conductor and a resistor. How come I don't have a circuit? I don't have a path. So you got to make sure the path goes all the way around. Now I've got a simple circuit. Okay, what if... Okay, we'll do that. I could also draw it this way. What's that symbol? Ground. Do I have a path? Yes. Nope. No, no. You know the ground. You know the ground. There you go. Okay. Do I have a path? Yep. Yep. So I have power supply, conductor, resistor, and a path, right? Yep. Okay. So just make sure you have it all a path going all the way through. What if I had a switch? Yep. Now do I have a circuit? No. Not unless it's an open circuit. But it's not a complete running circuit. Okay, so a simple circuit must have those things. All right, let's talk about Ohm's suggestion. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a law. <laughs> it's a law. Of the, of the coffee cups my daughter says she's going to get me, you know, I already have the one that says the wrench size is not the bolt size. So you should make up a whole bunch of these for me. She goes, yeah, and the next one's going to be it's, it's Ohm's Law, not Ohm's Suggestion, Dad. Because apparently I say that. So it is Ohm's Law, not Ohm's Suggestion. Meaning that if it's a law, can you break it? Yes. <laughs> so if you're, if, if you're a uh, law of physics... <laughs> okay, so if you're doing something in the lab and you say, well, I know that it should be this because of Ohm's law, but it's not, then where does that leave us? You're wrong. That means you're wrong. <laughs> it's just that simple. You're wrong because it's not a suggestion. It's not. It is a law. So Ohm's law, what does Ohm's law say? Um, well, let's see here. I'll write it out. It says the current... The current in an electrical circuit, in an electrical circuit, an electrical circuit is directly, oops, I'm right, is directly proportional To, well, what does directly proportional mean? The, um, the, 
The amount of water I drink is directly proportional to the number of times I will use the bathroom. <laughs> right? Okay, so directly proportional. What is um, so the opposite? Um, inversely proportional. What is inversely? I can. Inversely proportional. The. Inverse, you drink water and you sweat it out. Now I was going to think about something like the further away I get from you, the less I can smell you. So the distance is inversely proportional to the. Something like that. All right. So the, I'm just going to lose it. The current in electrical circuit is directly proportional to, meaning the same as um, directly proportional to. The EMF, what is EMF again? Voltage. Voltage. So the current, which again is, the symbol is I, in electrical circuit is directly proportional to the EMF, voltage, and inversely proportional. Inversely, inversely proportional. to the resistance. All right, so w that is to say that current, if, let me see, if voltage goes up, goes up, current will go what? Up or down? down. Oh, current current is proportional to the voltage. Oh. If voltage goes up, current will go up. Okay. Uh, current, um, if resistance goes up, current will go down. So you got that because it's inversely proportional. Will go down. Like that's a lot easier way of saying it than directly proportional and inverse. Well, that's why I wrote it like that for you, because that's the way Mr. Ohm wanted it written. That was in quotes, too. So tell me when I'm okay to move over. I'll just start moving. Here we go. See. <laughs> Wait. The little button on this is just this panic. have PowerPoint for this trick. Are we good? Yep. All right. So we need to, we have the three things of the volts, the current, and the resistance, and now we need to memorize, let me say memorize the Ohm's Law. I was looking for my Ohm's Law wheel. Well, that's just going to freeze up, so that's fun. All right. Rather than do all that. So if you, you've seen the Ohm's Law wheel, I believe. Let me see. Yep, yeah, that worked well. Oh, that's why. Log in. Okay, whatever. Please stand by. Technical difficulties. No, I didn't put it there. Did I put on the other one? There we go. Ohm's Law Wheel. Okay. I'll just give you a minute to memorize that. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> so, you don't need to memorize all of that. You just need to memorize this. E, I, R. Can you memorize that? Yeah. All right. We can put this right here like that. 
Some people like to put it in a triangle. I don't really care. Just E, I, and R. And what this is saying is if you want to find anything, just cover it up and let's see what's left. If I want to, if I want to find E, I'll cover up E. Cover up E. Here we go. Cover it up. What's left? I times R. So E equals I times R. Okay, what is I then? E divided by R. Is E divided by R. And what is R? E divided by I. Well, you're almost done. We only have one thing left, and that's power. But power is easy enough because I like pi. P-I-E. So P equals I times E. Good enough? Pi. <clears throat> so that's not hard. And if you can remember that, you can remember it all. Mostly. Sort of. Oh, no, it's all the same. It's easy. I will show you how easy it is. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk a little bit about power. 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 Okay, power is expressed in the watt. Uh-huh. The watt. Or symbol is P. The watt. I think it was James Watt. I don't know. Uh, which is... P equals I times E. My notes actually say E times I, but I'm going to leave that the way it is. It is, <clears throat> why is that like that? Oh, leave that alone. Oh, I know why. Let's not do that. Okay. Um, according to my notes, which I never really thought about it, 0 0.0013 four of a horsepower. I don't think that's important. One watt equals one volt times one amp. Well, that makes perfect sense to me. So we talk about this horsepower up here. We can now talk about horsepower. What exactly is a horsepower? Uh, it is 746 watts. I don't have this in my notes handy, so I'm going to have to try and remember this offhand. So where this comes from is, I should almost stop the recording because I get it wrong, but it's something like this, all right? So this guy, Watt, he's got to sell his, his engine. So he makes a steam engine. I believe it was a steam engine. And so he wants to sell it to the mining companies. So you go imagine this, he's a great salesman and he goes to the mining companies and he says to the mining companies, hey, you buy my steam engine, it does the work, you know, it'll save you work and it does the work of these horses. Well, how much work is compared to the, to the horses? And so that's where they came up with the horsepower. It was actually, an, it's an English plow horse, if I'm not mistaken. It's a very specific type of horse. It was, yeah, is that what it is? Yes. Okay, English plow horse. And so that's one horsepower. And so he had his engine and, and the engine put out X number of watts. And I don't know how they figured that out for horsepower. That I don't know. But anyway, that's where they came up with this horsepower was this English workhorse. And so what could this engine do in the equivalent? That became one horsepower. And I don't really know from there how it became 746 watts exactly. I've never thought much about that one until now. But anyway, that's what that is. So maybe I have it in here somewhere. I don't know. So uh, one horsepower is 746 watts. It is also, um, let's see, yeah. The formula right above it, what? Is that one watt equals one? One volt equals one amp. What's that? You just asked what the formula Oh, okay. One volt times one amp. <laughs> so we got to put E for volts? I got the symbol for what was the voltage? Um, well, I just put V. No, it's actually, you can also put a little V like that. Oh. No, okay, I'm sorry. You would never put six E's. Yeah. You would never do that. Um, in Ohm's law, it's E. Oh, it's but I would, yes, but I would, so that's okay. wrong. I would write six volts. Yeah, I was going to ask you that too. I was just like, what symbol? Okay, I got you now. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, amount of energy, amount of energy to raise, to raise 550 pounds, LBS pounds, a distance 
of one foot in one second. Or 24.9.5 kilograms distance of 30.48 centimeters, but we don't care about that. <clears throat> there is also the jewel. The jewel, and with the letter J, and that is work done. Work done by one watt in one second. When I was a medic a long time ago in an ambulance and we had the paddles, they were in joules. But she didn't really blast somebody for a whole second, so. All right, well, let's, we'll have some fun now. Dangers of electricity. And it's kind of funny because I watch some of you when you're especially like you're measuring your amps and stuff. You'll just put the lead in one hand and you have the lead in the other hand. You squeeze your, your clips against it like that. And you'll read your amps. And I'm thinking, yeah, you know, this is a habit you're not going to want to get used to. <laughs> if I wanted to measure amps coming out of the wall, you think that'd be a good idea to clamp onto one wire and clamp on the other wire with yes, my ammeter? Yes. Yeah, you'll feel it. Um, All right. So, danger of electricity. Well, let me see what I have here. Your body, not mine, but your body. So I have superpowers. Um, Want to hear about my superpowers? Yeah. Well, I have, I have several. One, I have night hearing. <laughs> I, have, I have the ability to wake up in the middle of the night and use the bathroom without looking at a clock and know what time it is. Nail it every time. Yeah. <laughs> so I just let's go every half hour. How hard is it? Yeah. <laughs> I just went to the dentist. <laughs> He's very thorough. <laughs> Wow, you am glad to wear the mask. Okay, so your body, your body has a has something, a lot of resistance, a lot of resistance. Um, um, so it takes more than a few volts. A few. Oops few volts to cause current flow. All right, so B. And I've shown you guys that. You know, you'd be looking at something. I think a couple of you, I've, I've just grabbed your meter. I put it on the 10,000 scale and I grab it. And I'm like, well, look, you get a reading, you know. So it's continuity. No, it's just me. I can read it. So we do, we do have continuity with our bodies, but it takes a lot of voltage to actually cause that, um, that current to flow. So I don't know if, it, well, I have it written down here. I was going to say, so what is that? So um, I already wrote B. E. So a um, calloused. I copied this from something. A calloused dry hand, dry hand may have, may have uh, more than a hundred thousand ohms uh, because of a thick, a thick. Uh, outer layer of dead cells. Now, once you get past those dead cells, everything changes. Now, just to kind of give you an example, in the uh, the room where you guys are with the computers and doing that work, so behind you are those those new machines, and the one closest to the door that's a magnetic particle machine, of which I used to spend. I spent many hours in those things. So what that does is it, 
uh, and I'll explain it to you in, in the next uh, segment after electricity, but you'll get a chance to do this. But basically, you're going to take a, a ferrous part, something iron, and you're going to turn it into a magnet by putting a lot of amps through it. So commonly, I would be putting about 2,000 amps through a crankshaft. And so the way the bench works is, well, first of all, you're in the dark. And so your eyes are acclimated to it. And on my particular machine, I had a long bar that was right about here on my legs. And so, and then a foot pedal. So I'd have a heavy crankshaft. I would reach in, hit the foot pedal, and pneumatic uh, clamps would clamp it. And then I pour the solution on it, and I would just lean in against the bar, and that would energize it to 2,000 amps. So you know, I'm free and clear. But it just never seemed to fail. Whenever the boss would walk in, and I'm doing something, and like I would reach in, I would grab it, and I'm holding on the part, he would lean in and press the bar because it ran the length of the machine, energize the machine with 2,000 amps while I'm hanging on to something. And I never got shocked. Right? Well, why not? Because it's 2,000 amps, but the voltage is extremely low. Not enough to actually go through me, thankfully. Otherwise, it would have hurt. Um, so, yeah, it happened to me all the time. And every time, you go, don't hit the bar, dang it. Um, yeah, when I was training people, I'd always undo that bar. So I had one little button you had to hit, which I hated. But I'm like, no, why are you doing that? Because you'll. One of these days I'll get shocked. So, um, but the internal, and it's almost break time, so internal body, the internal, internal, um, let me see, body. Resistance is about 300 ohms. So here's what I read about all this. One milliamp, how many amps is that? 0 .001. 0 0.001 amps. Okay, 0 .001. Uh, you'll get a tingling. <laughs> like licking a 9 volt battery. Who's done that? Uh, Best tester in the world. <laughs> All right. 5 milliamps. 5 milliamps, it's actually accepted as the minimum harmless current. 10 to 20 milliamps, um, you could have muscular contractions. Um, inability to let go. And you guys are doing your circuits. Are you already up to 10 to 20 milliamps? Okay, so why were you not feeling it when you're holding on to it? Because the resistance, Ohm's law, your resistance is so high that you're not actually putting that much through you. Um, but if the voltage goes up, there you go. So 100 to 300, 300 milliamps uh, may cause, may cause V-fib. For those of you who aren't in the medical community or watch your medical shows, that is what? Ventricular, Ventricular fibrillation, potentially fatal. <laughs> Your heart, instead of pumping, it just kind of does that. Six amps. Um, this says sustained. Sustained uh, ventricular contraction. Because that means it squeezes and doesn't let go. Um, followed by... Um, well, I don't do. We'll just go with that. I think my notes is sustained ventricular contraction uh, followed by normal heart rhythm. I don't think so. Um, that would be your normal temporary respiratory paralysis, possible burns. I'll put that burns. All right. So you don't want that. So I would not get in the habit of holding onto the wires while you're checking. How much stuff do you have? High voltage stuff? 
Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, but it would be. So wait a minute. I was talking about amps, but suddenly I asked him about voltage. Why am I asking about high voltage? Thought it was amps that mattered. Why do I care about high voltage? It's what pushes the amps, right? Your 9 volt battery doesn't have enough push to go through you. So if we figured out Ohm's law, if we had Ohm's law is E, I, and R, and let's just say, I don't know, who remembers? So if we have 10,000 on your Simpson meter, about halfway up the meter on 10,000, what is that about? 50,000 volts? Yeah, yeah, uh, 50,000 ohms? Yeah. Okay, so I have about 50,000 roughly ohms of resistance. So, um, and if I have, I want to have, let's just say, um, 100 milliamps, 100 milliamps. How much voltage do I need for that? Using Ohm's law. Well, I want to find the E, so all I have to do is multiply I times R, right? Mm -hmm. So what is, what is that? Just got to move some zeros around. Five thousand what? Volts. So I would need five thousand volts to actually get hurt on that, in theory. I'm not going to push. We also have uh, twenty-five hundred volt power lines running out around the airfields, <laughs> and that stuff that we'd have to maintain. A lot of times, you get rodents in there that chew on them or whatever. And <clears throat> yeah, which is fun, but all of a sudden, hey, we lost a leg on this circuit, and then you go out there. Of course, you have to go manhole to manhole to find it. And luckily, there's always near you know, the manhole, <laughs> and there's a crispy critter in there, and then. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make sure everything's de-energized. <laughs>